Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love and today I want to share with you one of my very favorite ways to create. I want to do an art prompt challenge with you where we'll be setting up some parameters for ourselves, painting on a large sheet of paper with the intentions of cutting it up. I hope you enjoy today's painting practice and I can't wait to see what you're creating. I have some of these do it for the process affirmation cards that I got from Emily Jeffords a long time ago. And I thought maybe this was the perfect time to pull out an affirmation that goes right with this process. And this one says, today I will do it for the process and not for the external affirmation. And this is the perfect type of project to go with that. We're not trying to make an amazing piece of art. We're not trying to paint our masterpiece. We're gonna play and explore and experiment. And I showed you in one of my art halls, this fun book that I got called The Color Meditation Deck. And this, this book is so fun. It's, it's got a little book in it that tells you how to use it, but it also has lots of prompt cards that you can then use. You can pull two or three and say, okay, this is what I'm gonna use for my inspiration to paint today. So I pulled a couple out and I really liked Limited Color Palette. That's one of my very favorite ways to create personally. And that's where you pull out a couple of supplies in a color palette that you're like, here's what I'm going to make today. Here's what I'm going to create with. And you don't have all the supplies from your studio at your disposal. You'll want to create with these colors. Now, in addition to colors, I also consider white and black to be kind of neutrals. Um, so I could pull out the white to go with this. I'm going to work in, a, in inks today. And then I also like this tangled abstract prompt. Um, which is really, really fun and tangled. And so let's work in a limited color palette and let's not be super uh, strict about it. We can work kind of tangled. And if you hit the prompt on the nose when you're done, great. If you don't, that's okay. Don't beat yourself up. I'm also going to be painting on my Canson watercolor paper. This is the Canson XL pad. It's more of the student grade kind of paper or maybe like a medium grade. It's a mix. It's not 100% cotton. Um, and I like it because you get a gigantic pad of paper for pretty cheap. And I really love it when the Michaels runs these buy one get one free because I'm like, I need all the paper you have. Just sell it all to me. <laughs> And I'm going to be using acrylic inks. And so I personally pulled out Indigo by FW. I also have Sepia by FW. And I'm obsessed with this teal color by um, Amsterdam. This is turquoise green because to me it looks very much like the color verdigris, the color that copper turns as it ages out there. And I'm going to dip pieces of copper in mine. And then I also pulled out white because I think white and black are neutrals. So I have a white Posca pen. I've got a black Posca pen. I'm sure I've got some black ink somewhere, but I don't think I'm going to put black in with these dark colors. And then after all of that, I do reserve the right to throw in some gold. <laughs> so let's just see what we can create today. I, more than anything, love to see ink run and kind of mesh and blend and do its thing. And so I'm going to put water on the paper and let the ink kind of do its thing. So I'm going to pull out a big mop brush. Oh yeah, this is a good one. Princeton Neptune number eight, a nice big brush that I can just paint. And the goal here is we're going to cut this up into something amazing later. So don't worry at the moment about what you got going on. And I think I'm going to actually pull out a pencil, which fits in with my color palette. It's just a, a water soluble pencil because remember one of our prompts is tangled. So we could use this as an opportunity to get the paper started. So let's just scribble and get started. And that way you've messed up the page. You're not sitting there looking at it thinking, oh no, I don't know what to make. I feel a little bit paralyzed here with my white page paralysis, which let me tell you, that's a real thing. Oh, look at that. Oh, big circles. Oh, I like big circles. <laughs> <laughs> See, it already just starts you off having fun. Just scribble on the page. Does not matter what that is. We may be coloring it up. We may not. 
And there must have been some yellow in this brush from something I did previously. Look at that, the water turned yellow. So I've got a big thing of water back here. I'm not even worried about the color of the water. And I'm gonna just kind of push around some of this, which now that I that the water's soluble, I might regret that I <laughs> put so much of it out here. <laughs> ah, just go with it, just go with it. All right, and for the inks, this is what I love about the inks. Oh my gosh, we're just going to kind of let it do some of its thing, and then we're gonna see what it does. We might hate it. You might never see this video. <laughs> Teasing. Might as well put them all out there. Mistakes and all, huh? Okay, so we could, if we're thinking, ooh, I wish to move this around some, we could take a brush and drag a brush through some of this and just help it out. Oh, I love watching ink move. Ooh, see, and we get some good marks. Look at this, fan brush. Everybody needs a fan brush. Fan brushes make such great marks and drags and gets things moving. Just throw that in the water over here. And we could come through and, ooh, ooh, big circles. Whoa, look at that. Oh my gosh, big circles. Now, my, uh, this particular ink, the stopper doesn't seem to be working. So it's handy if you have some pipettes available because now we don't have to worry about our stopper not working. And we can come through with our pipette. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Arr! And then just squeeze your stuff back in there and then just go over to your little water thing and you can just clean that pipe it out and it's ready to go so if you have a an ink that doesn't seem to work that's how we fix that okay let's throw in some turquoise let's throw in and I'm painting pretty fast the goal here is not to worry about what you have going on don't spend too much time in one area just start laying that color down I'm not worried about composition I'm not concerned about what I end up with because I just want to have some fun at my art table <laughs> and I know every time I get something I like out of doing something like this so I just don't worry about it let's just throw some of this and help some of it out with some water oh look at that oh <laughs> do you make funny noises when you make art let me tell you I didn't used to <laughs> but it kind of adds to the process it just if you sit here and start doing some of this I guarantee you'll start having more fun if you start making some art start making some noises while you're going oh, I know it makes me sound like a nut when I'm on these videos but how much fun am I having <laughs> oh that's some fun stuff let's see maybe I want some white in there let's throw so we got a lot of white paper here maybe wait a minute maybe I want to take another fan brush and help out something here let's see oh ooh, ooh, look at that yeah 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 look at that oh I like that drag that blue I'm obsessed with this. I like this right here. Oh, that's my favorite part right there. This brown with that blue intersecting. I kind of want some more of that. All right, where's that pipette? I want some more of that. And I might need a little more water. I actually kind of like what this is doing right here too, though. Mm. Let's throw a little water in here. Maybe a little bit of this brown. See, this is a good way to be like, check out what I what I made, check out what I like, why do I like that? Now we know later, I might do a piece of just this brown, which is the sepia and that turquoise, and then I'm thinking I might like that a lot. Ooh, right here, let's, let's put some water right here and help this out. Oh, maybe a tiny bit of brown. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm really loving this right here. I almost hate to even touch it. So even though I've got some good space there I could be working with, um, I like what that's doing. I feel like this might be something. Okay, so I'm loving all of this. Oh, yeah, I was going to maybe do some white. Let's see. What's the white going to do? Just 
check that out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have let this dry just enough that it is letting me make marks with the white. Which is super cool. Check that out. That is super cool. So now I know Posca pen. Because once we cut these apart, we might go back and say, oh yeah, I need some Posca pen wherever. Um, so I'm going to let this dry. And I might take a little bit of some shop cloth, which is basically blue paper towels that don't have texture on it. And I might soak up some of the extra ink that these kind of divots have created. And then we can continue layering on top of this. This doesn't have to be the end. Um, but I'm going to soak up any spots that are like super duper thick. And that might make an, a, an additional interesting texture as I do that. So we might love what that's done anyway. And I see some over here. So let's just, uh, I do kind of love that. If you're really loving what it's doing, just suffer through letting it dry as naturally as it wants to dry. Um, but I'm loving that area right there. I'm also kind of feeling like maybe, maybe I want some white. Look at there, I'm going to have to use a pipette. <laughs> that thing isn't working. How annoying. So let's just pipette a little bit of white ink. And then, check it out. I'm going to do some. Everybody needs pipettes. If you didn't have any and you're like, I don't need that. Yes, you do! You need some pipettes for that exact reason. The moment you want to do something and your ink dauber is not cooperating. And you know, the ink, it's pretty thick. It's going to take a little bit for this stuff to dry. So I want you to get to a point that you're like, wow, I got a lot of chaos going on here. I don't know if I like it. I don't know if I'm going to get anything out of it. And then I want you to set this to the side and dry for several hours, maybe overnight. I want you to resist using a heat gun because you might release your tape. Uh, and the ink might seep under before you expected it to do that. I'm already feeling some good stuff in this area. I'm loving what the dots did over here. I like my little circle thing. I'm feeling good stuff. So I'm going to set this to the side and let it dry. And then we'll see if there's anything else we want to add to it. All right, so we are... 98% dry. There's a couple real thick areas here that still have a little bit of drying to do, but it is at the point that I can mark make on top if I want. And I wanted some gold, so we've got the gold pulled out in my dip pen. This is my Kakamori Brass Nib. You can use a regular dip pen too. I just happen to love this one. And I'm going to mark make on here. And you know, you could cut your piece up before you do your extra mark making, but I kind of want the surprise of my marks to be part of my decision process when I start to cut these up. So let's do some mark making. And if you do like me and you work the wrong direction, which I do it every single time, have a, have a stick or something around that you can keep kind of lifted up off your art to give yourself a hand rest. This is a big paint stick I got from the hardware store. Or you could use a yard stick. That'd be great. I like using stuff from the hardware store. Um, for art supplies and for stuff like this because it's cheaper than getting one that's officially an art one. <laughs> So get creative. And remember our prompt is tangled and limited color palette. So we've definitely done the limited color palette and some of my mark making on top of that can be considered my tangled in addition to what we had underneath that. So don't forget, we are creating specific stuff, kind of with a little purpose here, and I love that. All right, 
we actually have a lot going on here. So I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to start cutting up because at this point, I don't know if it needs anything else or not. And if we cut these into pieces, then we can decide for sure what it actually needs. So I'm going to let this dry and I'll be back. All right, so this is mostly dry. And what I do at this point is I go ahead and peel the tape off. I'm not really needing it to stay attached any longer. And you know, if you paint something like this and you're like, wow, completely love it, don't want to cut it up, then that's fantastic. That really would be like the ultimate goal is maybe you actually end up loving it more than anything you've ever created. Usually though, I'm thinking, can't wait to cut it up because actually I'm kind of loving that like it is. It is really pretty as an abstract and if we can turn it other directions we can now look at it in different ways and just see what do we have going in there. So I thought I had it 99% dry but I can see there's a little wet hair on the edge and I'm just going to sop the water up because I'm going to go ahead and cut it up. Oh yeah. There's so many things in here that are just absolutely gorgeous. Look at this area right here. So beautiful the way that all this has blended and then we've got that little gold in there. Oh, that might be my favorite spot. So what I like to do is either make myself a viewfinder in the size that I want the finished piece of art to be out of a piece of watercolor paper, which is what I've done here, or I get some pre-made mats uh, that you can get at the art store or the frame store so that I can then kind of view what are the different sections? What does it look like? Is there anything in here that's so amazing that I'm like, this right here is the finished piece. And I start looking for those little bits of amazement and beautiful things. Another thing I like to do is cut these into stripes and glue the stripes back on in other like another order look at that right there just set that down i like how this comes in so now you can start looking at composition you can start looking at where the colors are falling and then you can say oh does it need anything else maybe a little bit of posca mark maybe some dots maybe some other things um, for some reason i'm like love loving that it does kind of cut me out of my little corner that i love though and if i cut right there i don't have enough left of that corner that i love but dang i'm liking that what if we move it this way do i like it as much I don't know. Do you? I need a little vote button here. You need to vote up like that one right there. And as I move, go, no, 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 not that. <laughs> don't forget to look at your stuff in different directions. Like, look at that one. Whoa, that one's got some movement and it's kind of talking to me there. That's kind of crazy. Crazy enough, I'm kind of feeling like that right there is pretty cool. Let's look. Let's just keep on searching. See, I'm still feeling this here. This is a smaller piece of paper. Normally when I do these, I like the biggest piece of paper that I can get or tape several together. And then you have a bunch of options where you're not locking yourself out of, say, the one thing that you really loved. Because I love this right here. And you can make a whole bunch of small pieces. See, and even though I love that and I thought this is going to be something. Oh, see right there, that's actually, that's it. <laughs> I love that. But if you do like a gigantic one, you have more opportunities for, say, several big ones and then some small ones and some micro art because I like micro art also. OK, so if I'm able to keep that part right there, what what does this look like if we just take part of that? <gasps> Ooh, see, that's pretty, too. So it really depends on how big are you trying to get out of that? I really loved that. All right, so I'm going to decide and then all I do once I decide what I really, really love. Dang it, that might just have to be a micro piece of art because this right here is beautiful. And I love how we've got the circles coming in from the side. I like how there's paper and marks underneath that I can still see. That one's really talking to me. So all I'm going to do is take a pencil and draw around the section that I like or I could take my paper cutter 
and paper cut if I want to really make sure they're straight. And we're going to cut these out. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Decide what, what do I love more than anything because I actually loved one right here too. All right, so check out what I decided I loved the most. And no piece goes in the trash. So even if that wasn't my favorite piece as like a big piece of art, these are beautiful. This one fits right in with these a little bit, but might need some mark making. Um, these are beautiful for collage elements. Um, so don't throw these away. Keep these in your paper stash and you can also put them in your color palette book and list what colors that you did next to these and then you'll be able to refer to that later. So I do love doing stuff like that. But check this out. Let's look at each one and how I kind of framed it. This is like a three and a half by five piece of mat board. Oh, look at that one. I love the composition that I ended up with. So this is why I don't worry about composition while I'm painting because when I'm done, I can pull in the right elements in the right spot rather than as I'm painting, try to make everything perfect then. And then when I get it in the wrong spot, say, oh no, I ruined it. Um, but that gorgeous. And then this one I really liked in the same kind of format so I can have a little diptych. And I loved how the pieces kind of come in from the side and then how we have this yummy almost stream of gold coming off of that. Look how lovely those are as a pair. Now I can see I've got some pretty gold dots over here. I could come back and embellish a little further with some gold dots if I wanted them in more than one place. Um, so that's an option. And then I really, really loved that corner and I just had to save it. And then as a little square, look how gorgeous that is and will be framed. Gorgeous. I also liked this little composition here. I might have cut that one tighter than I intended or it might have been a little leftover piece. But I loved how we have a little bit coming in from this corner and this corner. You can see the paper underneath with the original scribbles that we did. And I love that composition. This was the extra piece that was left over. And I think to complete this one, I would put some of the gold dots so that it was more in line say with this piece here with those pretty dots on there um, and then that actually would be a finished piece for me so I'm definitely going to add some dots to that and then these two could be you know finished as together so I hope you loved this process it was all about having some fun and then when you were all done cutting it up into a reimagined piece of art and seeing what can I come up with and still have fun painting and trying new color palettes. I mean, this one's just like a little gem. I just love it so much. And I would never have created this if I sat down specifically to paint that. That is what I love about abstract art. It's very organic. It's in my abstract art, at least, I like watching things run. I like the serendipitous nature of seeing what I get rather than how uh, to paint and be specific. And then I get little jewels like this. And I'm like, I could never have created that any other way. So I want you to paint something big with the intention of cutting it up. I want you to keep in mind our prompts today, which were limited color palette 
and tangled. So let's see what we can create with just a couple of colors. Give yourself some limitations and see what we can create. And I can't wait to see what you come up with. And if you love getting some yummy art videos like this, definitely subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.